Welcome to the PBC 2020 NBA Draft Remote Film Room. My name is John Chepkevich. I serve as the Director of Scouting for the PBC. And joining me today is the back-to-back -back Big West Player of the Year, one of the most productive players in college basketball, and a 2020 NBA Draft early entrant, Lamine Janet. What's going on, Lamine? Hey, sir. How are you? Hey, doing pretty well. Thank you for joining. Appreciate it. Thank you. I uh, hope you're holding up all right here during the quarantine. Uh, and I know normally it would be a really exciting time to be um, having declared for the draft and testing the waters and starting to arrange your workouts and everything. But, you know, with all the uncertainty surrounding the pre-draft process, I uh, wanted to give you a platform here to kind of show people how you think through the game, how you make reads and, you know, what of your skill set will translate nicely to the NBA game. So let's get, dig into the film, if you're ready. All right. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, good deal. Yeah. So we're going to start on the offensive side of the ball here, where we know you're a high mm -hmm. volume scorer. You put up 25-plus per game. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that you have a variety of ways to score. First, we're going to touch on pull-up mid-rangers here. So mm – -hmm. You shoot about 44% of your total shots from, uh, you know, two-point jumper. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you put up a lot of reps from there. Maybe not the most efficient, like, you know, analytical shot, but you seem comfortable mm -hmm. like, getting into a rhythm and getting to your spots here like this. Is that a particular thing that you've been working on over the past few years? Yeah, I was working on it most of the on the summer, like in the summer, like my two like dribble, like pull up and stuff. So I think I've been working on it. Like I'm a, I'm a, like keep getting better on it. Like so, yeah. Yeah, and you have really good size and good coordination for your size, so it's good for mm -hmm. you to be able to, you know, have that in your bag to get to your spot and rise over guys and stop on a diamond pull up. So, you know. Yeah good to be able to go to that but not overly rely on it what i do like is that um, you've shown some growth as a three-point shooter and i think that you know if we run this clip back this is going to be yeah. maybe one of your key swing skills on the offensive end is being able to stick these from deep and you know that's from pretty far yeah. back you look comfortable taking it uh yeah. is that something that you had in your offensive repertoire back to your high school days or is that something that you've like focused on a lot once you got to cal state northridge uh i used to be able to show way better like in high school before i got hurt on my shoulder so i think i'm just like how i used to you know, and you know trying to get my shot back and stuff yeah, so so something that your injury kind of stalled a little bit, but now you're getting back into the swing of things and, you know, your three-point shooting percentage is around 30%, so not quite where you want it to be. But like you're saying, now that you're yeah. coming back from that injury and getting back into the swing of things and then in a more well-spaced NBA, maybe that'll open things up for you even more to be able to knock down more of these. Yeah. So next, let's move on to uh, here. You're on the break against Hawaii. You run the floor really well. I've noticed that you do a nice job of, you know, getting out in transition and beating your man down the court. So you'll see when this clip yeah. starts up, you're the whole way back here in the paint with the rest of the rebounders, but you're immediately sprinting and just trying to get to the other basket to provide an outlet mm -hmm. for the score. Mm -hmm. so it seems like you take a lot of pride in running the court here, beating your man down to the paint and providing your team with some uh, easy opportunities. Is that something that you focused on a lot? and Or was that something maybe in the scouting report against Hawaii where you knew you could beat their bigs down the court? Or do you think that's just something that is inherent in you and your strengths that you can carry forward to the next level? I think that's something that I've been doing like every time – when I don't get the rebound, I just like run the floor, trying to beat everybody like down to the other side. Yeah, and you've got, you know, really long strides and you're a good athlete for how big and long you are. And I think you can get a lot of easy transition looks at the next level as well. Yeah. So here we see your ISO dot on the perimeter. Get yourself mm -hmm. into the paint. And this is one of my favorite finishes from you uh, and all the clips mm -hmm. that we found. So you got this mm -hmm. ISO situation. 
What's going yeah. through your head right here? Like when you're matched out and you think you have a mismatch out on the perimeter, like what is your read in this situation? Yeah, I see him. He was like kind of far back, and that's when I kind of did a pump fake, and he got closer. That's when I like know like what I what I gotta do now. So when he got closer, that's when I did like a jab step and I just need to like, man, that's how I get like, I finished my left hand like that because like the other guy was coming for the charge. So I was trying to go around him. Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, the, like you said, the jab step to start, you know, you feel him up, you're sizing him up, that jab and like the little bit of a rip move too to kind of get his yeah. momentum going that way was great. And then you don't yeah. waste any time getting into the paint. Exactly mm -hmm. what you said. This guy's like standing there bracing for yeah. the move and you have yeah. the athleticism to kind of jump around him and get the little up and under finish with the left. Just really yeah. nice to done and have seen a lot of uh, really creative finishes like that uh, from yeah. you all year. Um, I think yeah, you. Uh, digging into your numbers, you finish at like a 73 or 74% clip at the rim, which is just mm -hmm. ridiculous. Like, are, are you. Yeah. Just always, I mean, like we said, you take some mid rangers, maybe a few too many, but like, do you yeah. love getting to the rim and love finishing inside and trying to get those easy buckets inside? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm good at finishing because I've been working on it. Like, so I really trust myself, like driving to the basket and trying to get the easy layup and stuff. For sure, and it's good to see also that uh, maybe you can speak to this play here. Is this? Is this a designed play where you guys are kind of uh, spread out here and you know that he's going to try to front you? Or is this just a read and react type thing where you spin around for the alley-oop? Most of the time, like me and my point guard, we do it like eye contact and, yeah. you know, we can talk like on eye contact. So most of the time, the defense will be trying to deny me. They don't want me to crash the ball out there. So right. when I see him like getting up, like I just like make a call and. I will every time I will and try to get the like out of you. Yeah. Really good like chemistry and nonverbal communication between you and your point guard there. And then great timing for you yeah. to rise up and finish like that and be able to just yeah. spin like that so quickly and set yourself up for that. Yeah. So next we're gonna move on to a couple of potential improvement areas on offense and these mostly right. come down to decision making and maybe trying to like force the issue a little too much, get a little too maybe overly yeah. aggressive with your shot selection or yeah. some un, kind of unforced errors, right? Yeah. So this one here ends up being a really tough shot. You, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there's still a lot of time on the shot clock, right? 25 seconds still on the clock. You do this yeah. with the legs and you're a little off balance. Do you think maybe? Mm -hmm you could talk through, you know, what your outlook is for trying to maybe shore up your shot selection and, you know, try to eliminate mm -hmm. all this stuff from your game. Yeah. I think I've been working on it because from last year to this year, I think I, I got better from that, like, about mm -hmm. my shot selection. So I think I'll be getting better on that, like, every single game. Yeah. And I think, you know, obviously with you being such a high usage player and, like, your team relying mm -hmm. on you to create and to score, like you're going to mm -hmm. inevitably have to take some tough looks. Right. But when you get yeah. to the level and you know, you're amongst a, a bunch of other talented players, maybe your role changes a little bit. You'll just want to make mm -hmm. sure that, like, you know, there are better opportunities on these types of possessions than that. Right. Yeah. And then here just kind of, you know, trying to bully your way to the rim being baited into a charge on that one nice left-handed layup that we looked at earlier. You did a nice job of avoiding the charge, but sometimes yeah. you can get a little overly aggressive and get baited into these. Is that something yeah. you've gotten used to like your opponents trying to uh, bait you into charges and trying to draw you into these kind of circumstances? Yeah. I think most of the time, like, the other team, we always try to take charge on me because I've been driving a lot. So I think sometimes I got to, like, you know, slow down my games. And, yeah. Yeah, just maybe a little more patience and a little more, you know, feeling the defense out and getting to your spots as opposed to, you know, I like how aggressive and assertive you are, but every once in a while you yeah. just end up taking some difficult looks like this right here and, 
you know, yeah. you just remove maybe a couple of those really tough ones from every game, mm-hmm. you'll be all that much more efficient of a player because of how well you finish at the rim and how we mm-hmm. talk, like we expect you to continue to grow as a jump shooter. Yeah. All right, next we're moving on to your defensive strengths here. So here you're matched yeah. up against Boise State. That's Derek Alston, who is uh, mm-hmm. another early entrant in this year's draft. Uh, mm-hmm. you a nice job of sliding your feet on him on the perimeter and keeping him in front of you and then ultimately getting up and impacting the shot here. Uh, is that something mm-hmm. that has kind of come naturally to you or do you work a lot on your – uh, your defensive technique and opening up your hips and sliding with guys. Uh, you want to maybe speak to your mentality when you're covering uh, a good isolation player on the perimeter. Yeah. I mean, I just don't like getting scores. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that's, that's why I think I've been playing like defense, like, you know, playing good defense. Yeah. And it seems like you, you know, it even seems for a second here, like, you kind of jump up there too, maybe too high for a second and he thinks he has a step on you, but you have the athleticism to open up and get back. Yeah. Like you said, that mentality to, you know, yeah. protect the rim and prevent uh, easy buckets for the other team. You can definitely see that in your assertiveness and you can see how fired up you are right there to have sent that pack in into the first row. Uh, you know, yeah. definitely can see you sparking some momentum for your team uh, when you get to yeah. the next level by making those types of impact plays. Yeah. Next here, uh, we have, let's see where are you, you're down on the block here, getting posted up, right? So mm-hmm. you just showed how you could defend out on the perimeter against quick guys, but also you're able to uh, hang with some big guys down low. He tries to spin yeah. the line and back you down, and you end up getting your hand in there and poking it out. Uh, yeah. How do you, like, what's your mentality against uh, big guys in the post? Because, you know, at the next level, you might be playing some four uh, potentially, right? That might be your kind of mm-hmm. two position. You'll be matched up mm-hmm. against guys that like to try to bang with you down low. What's your mentality mm-hmm. to uh, post defense? I mean, I got quick hands. So most of the time, like, you know, I'll be trying to, like, get the steal, like, when he dribble before, like, he, like, before he, like, how we say, spin, every time I'm trying to, like, get my ball. So, I think I can do that good. Right. So, you have, like, enough strength to keep him kind of out of the paint and off his spot. But then, like you were saying, that, you know, that yeah. kind of reactiveness that you're quicker yeah. than a lot of these bigs and can catch him off guard, yeah. and not paying attention, mm-hmm. to that out. And, you know, you yeah. see that they're out in the numbers too, as far as your steals and blocks that you accumulate over the course of the year. Very reactive. Here is mm-hmm. a opportune steal uh, in transition. So this, you guys get a bucket. This team is kind of mm-hmm. lackadaisical. You can see right here, you're mm-hmm. the whole way out past the three point line. But you want to maybe yeah. do you know what you saw in the specific play? Like, could you tell he wasn't paying attention? Did you know that maybe they were frazzled from you guys? Uh, you know, pulling up to a double-digit lead. What was going on here? You hear, like, I see him, like, you know, leaning, trying to throw the ball, but I saw both his player, like, like they were going to look at the ball. So that's why I said, let me go for the steal. He got to throw, like, one of them. So that's why I slowed down. Yeah, you, like, kind of see it coming out of the corner of your eyes. And then right here, you can see yourself kind of reacting. Yeah. Like, okay, I might have a chance to get at this. Pop over there. He seems like he might get it, but then you have that length. Uh, what's your wingspan? Do you know your wingspan? Uh, I don't know because uh, they say seven one, but I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, seven one seems about right to me, just from you know watching the film and stuff. And you can see that it ends up being impactful here as well as you're able to get your arm in there, reach in, poke it out, and then get up and mm-hmm. finish and extend the lead. Just a nice, nice heads up play there. Yeah. This one, you're in the post again. This guy has a little bit of size on you here, right? Mm-hmm. You're trying to clear guys out, and you're kind mm-hmm. of like, you know, using your core strength and really like holding up and walling up against him. Uh, do you think mm-hmm. that you have the physicality to hang with fives if you have to play some small ball five every once in a while or get switched onto a, like a truly big big? Yeah, I think sometimes I can – I can play good defense on it. Just gotta improve my strength like better. But but him when he caught the ball, I already know like he's not gonna. Score. 
Corum because I, I think I'll play him like a few times. So I know he, he's not like stronger than me and stuff. So I was ready like to grab him. Yeah, yeah. You do just a really good job of staying disciplined here, like keeping him out of the paint. And then you see like you, he's, yeah. up, he's trying to make a pass. Your whole team is playing good D here. And then just a, yeah. you know, this is you don't block the shot necessarily here, but just get a perfect high hand contest and make it tough for him. Forces a tough look. And then you track down the rebound here and get the break going. Yeah. Do you think that uh, you you know you have the potential to be a guy who can kind of either pull down boards or uh, block a shot and then initiate a fast break the other way, be like a kind of coast to coast initiator at the next level? Yeah, I think I can do that because like even in college, like, every time I get the ball, like I bring it like every time like for quick transition. Even if I don't score with like. I can find like an open pass and like, you know, facilitate life for my team. Yeah. Have you always been pretty comfortable as a handler? Uh, like, you know, I, you've always been pretty tall growing up, right? But did, were you, yeah. I mean, were you always working on your ball handling with the anticipation of like, I, I have goals of playing at the next level. And if I want to, you know, truly have, a pro career and pursue that route. I need to be able to handle at my size. Is that something you've been working on for a while? Yeah, I've been working on it, and I always like love like you know bringing the ball from a rebound or a block. You know, so that's something I've been working on it. For sure, seems like you're pretty comfortable with it. Yeah. Here you're kind of isoed out on the perimeter. Guy tries mm -hmm. to drive in on you on the block and pull a little fake spin move here, but you don't fall for it at all. You don't bite. You get a nice high hand contest here as well. Just, you know, really yeah. disciplined, nice defense again there. I like to see that. Yeah. Now, finally, we're just going to move on to some potential improvement areas on the defensive end as well. Uh, every once in a while, you can sort mm -hmm. of stop ball watching or, you know, maybe not be totally engaged on defense because of, Probably partly because yeah. of what you're asked to do on the offensive end. It's hard to have that switch on the entire time, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, this one, you mm -hmm. end up having a like a little bit of a rough closeout here to start and get spun around. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Your defense recovers. Uh, if mm -hmm. we pause it right here, you can see you're kind of mm -hmm. upright in this situation, right? Uh, do you want to yeah. maybe – maybe speak to how you could have played this uh, played this one through a little bit more engaged and locked in? Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember, like, the game, like, I had, like, four fouls, like, <laughs> so I think that's why I stopped, like, playing aggressive because, like, before that, like, I got a foul from an offensive rebound. Like, from my defensive rebound, I was trying to get a rebound and the player got me. So after that, I started like playing like aggressive and stuff, but I think that's something I got improved to on my game. I, you know, be focused on every time and be engaged in the game. Yeah, just being cognizant of like, like to begin with, if you know, trying to make sure you don't get yourself in foul trouble mm -hmm. by, you know, drawing those charges early on and stuff. So you're not in the situation. Mm -hmm. But then here, you know, even though you have four fouls, he ends up like, sealing you off pretty easily and is able to go up and get yeah, that rebound. So just, sure. you know, making sure that you're consistently engaged as an off ball defender. If you're able to do mm -hmm. that, you know, with some of that stuff we already saw on ball and some of your shot blocking and instincts with steals, if you can just be engaged more consistently, I think you could be a really nice defender as a pro. This one yeah. here ends up being something kind of similar in that, they run this inbounds play and you kind of get yourself caught in space there under the, under the basket as this is developing, yeah. uh, you know, ends up mm -hmm. sealed off here for an easy wide open three, just kind of, be, you know, yeah. uh, being a little bit more engaged as an off ball defender. Do you want to maybe speak to like what was going on on this play and maybe what you could have done better here? Uh, out there, like, I think I could have done better. Like, cause, when, if I was like ready at the beginning, I would have been like able like to go through the screen, through, yeah. through the screen. But like I wasn't like ready at the beginning, so and I think I was trying to call a switch, but my teammate didn't hear me. Yeah, and, it's a combo of like both 
you know, making sure that you're communicating as an off ball defender, as these screen actions yeah. are coming, because you're going to see a lot of stuff like this at the next level. And then just yeah. kind of participating and reacting to these kinds of things to make sure they don't get a wide open look. Yeah. And here's just one more where, uh, you know, last clip we have here for the defensive improvement areas. It seems like, again, this is a similar communication type thing on this one, right? Where mm -hmm. you and your teammate, you're coming down the floor. It seems like there's this screen here and, you know, you get kind of mm -hmm. caught in between helping and getting back out on your guy for the uh, closeout gets an easy three. So I don't mm -hmm. think it's necessarily like huge weaknesses on defense, but just something about, you know, being mm -hmm. an off ball defender, turn that on more consistently Then I think that, you know, there's yeah. a future for you as a defender going forward. Yeah, for sure. What do you think, uh, you know, as you make this transition to the pros, how many positions do you think you can guard at the NBA level? I think I can go out like one, two, four, like, you know, because like, you know, I can like, I've been like able to grow my life like point guard, like wings. So I think I can grow like all four spots. Yeah, having that versatility will be huge and be able to help keep you on the court. Yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, Doug mm -hmm. Clips saw some really good stuff there. The numbers yeah. are obviously off the charts, right? The level of productivity is insane. I know yeah. a lot of scouts have taken notice of this, and mm -hmm. um, you know, I certainly have and enjoyed talking through those clips with you and talking through yeah. how you see the game and how your game has developed. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to, like, get in front of teams in an intimate setting and be able to, you know, prove yourself against other draft prospects in these workouts and stuff. But yeah. kind of wanted to just give you the stage now to express yourself yeah. to these teams. So who is Lamine Janet? And if a team yeah. is to bring you into their organization, what can they expect from you both on and off the court? Uh, I mean, I'm a great guy, like, off the court. So... <laughs> Yeah, like, and I'm a good teammate. I can help the team, like, on many stuff, like, you know, defensive rebound, and, you know, sometimes I can get, like, a easy bucket, like, you know. So I can, like, do multiple things, like, on the court. Yeah. yeah, having multiple ways to add value is huge, and then, you know, you have – the you know six seven six eight frame the seven foot plus wingspan you've got the mm -hmm. you know the total scoring package you have all this sort of encouraging stuff and I think you know as you continue to grow and develop into your uh, mm -hmm. role as a pro I'm really excited mm -hmm. to see how things pan out for you so uh, Lamine mm -hmm. thank you very much for joining appreciate your time and stay safe yeah thank you sir.